great experience. Um, four months of training just to get here. So it was worth it, I guess. So that was in October. Um, I had just run um, a 50K in the um, snow and mud, and I was pretty tired. But um, as, as, I was, as I was running that, I just thought of a new goal that I would try to run 50 miles before I turned 50. So I had, you know, four years really to go um, to do that. But I just started thinking more and more that I should just keep training um, and just do this 50 mile race in the spring. So here we are, I've been training since then. Um, here is my training plan and um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I only, out of this whole time, I only missed one run. Um, I had to move things around because, you know, just life in general, um, I had to either um, sometimes move them to the day before or I had to run. Um, I ran in the middle of the night a few times. Um, I had to run in some really, really cold weather. We had um, a couple weeks there in February where the uh, wind chill was in the negative 30s and I ran um, then. I, the only run I really missed was during that time. I had a, a long run scheduled on a really cold day and I ran the day before. And my wife just said, you're not going back out there today. So I skipped that run. But besides that, I ran every day outside. Um, no treadmill work. Um, I kept that schedule even through um, my kids' sports, my daughter's basketball. Son's basketball. And um, I really just kept um, the training plan going the whole time. I did um, races in between. Even during this training plan, I ran two marathons. Um, I ran a self-supported 50K and um, do it all. I just ran and ran and ran. So this week is my taper week. Part of the reason I'm making this video is because of that, because you just kind of go crazy now. Um, I'm only running two times um, this week after running three or four times a week for all of these months and really high mileage. And then this week is really low. So I'm going to take you through this final week and show you what my training was like and just talk to some of the people that have been with me this entire time and get their thoughts on this training plan. And I'm going to get you right up to race day. And then my next video will be the race and hopefully a completed 50 mile race. Um, I'm very excited about it, but I'm also nervous at the same time. Um, I really feel like I've trained um, really well and there's really nothing else that I could have done. And I really feel like um, I'll be out there running, you know, uh, 18 miler and think, you know, I'll have to do this two more times. And it really feels like it's doable, especially with the um, stops and the aid stations that you get during the uh, race. So that's going to be exciting. Um, so the race this week is going to be the Prairie Spirit Trail 50 mile race. Um, really flat. It's just an out and back on um, uh, rails to trails. So that is a really good course to do a first 50 mile, I think. I ran my first 50K there and I really enjoyed it. So um, looking at the weather forecast, it looks really good. So I'm excited about that. And I'm just excited to get this final week underway and get to the race on Saturday. Okay, so one of the other things that I have done for the last three or four years is go to Anytime Fitness and work out with a trainer. Um, pretty much three times a week for a long time. So we're going to finish that up this week. I've also been using this whiteboard to write down my weekly mileage. And today I'm going to write down the last mileage for the last training week, which is really exciting. And as you can see, this week is very light. I have four miles on Tuesday 
um, a 5K on Thursday, and then Saturday is the race of 50 miles. All right, I think you guys need to know that Clint is the best. There's nothing that he can't do. Um, you will never meet a more consistent, determined, willing, handsome man in your life. No, seriously, um, he's been training really hard for this 50-mile um, race. I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, he asked me and his wife to be a part of it. We've been training for a very, very long time. Um, I think he's going to dominate it, and I know that this is probably only the beginning. So let's do it. Number one reason that I think Clint is going to do great is because he puts in the work. I don't care if it's rain, sleet, or snow on the ground. He's going to go out there. He's going to complete his run. Um, he's going to give his best effort. So I look forward to seeing him push himself, push himself past um, his comfort zone. I look forward to seeing him cross that finish line um, and really just proving to him and anyone else that's doubting him um, what he can do, you know, what his body is capable of, regardless of his age, regardless of his height, um, and regardless if he's never run that far. So, just against all odds. So, I'm excited, and I'll see him at the finish line. Today is Wednesday, the week of the race, and it is one of the harder times when you're in a taper and you have absolutely no workout. Um, this entire five months, I've pretty much, I've had rest days, but not a ton of rest days. But today is a completely rest day, no actual recovery or anything. So I am going to go into restore, um, get some compression therapy, and um, cryo. So I'm gonna go in there and get this going. Three workouts, um, four so, miles, five k. Yeah, like my last one's tomorrow. <laughs> For anybody else, man, that's a, you know. <laughs> okay, so I am doing the compressor right now, and um, legs feel really good. Hopefully this will help even more. Um, right after this, I'm going to do uh, cryo and get really cold. Okay, now I'm getting ready to do the full body cryo. You're in there for uh, just a couple of minutes, but it really um, helps you be refreshed afterwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and go out there and get this going. Brandon decided to do cryo with me, so that's exciting. I think we've done it almost, I've only done it like maybe one time with that. So. I, I think I do this thing about twice a month. Right? Yeah. Whenever a friend of mine come in here, I do cry. <laughs> Are you nervous about your race, Clint? So I didn't wear my socks. <laughs> I came in here and these flowers got caught on my robe. The vase fell and broke. So, so far, this race is going really well. <laughs> yep, there's the nerves kicking in. You're going to do great, though. <laughs> Today is Thursday, two days before my 50 mile race. Dark outside and I am running my last run for the training series and it is a 5K. Um, once I'm done, then I'm done running for this race. Today I am at uh, Heritage Park. It's dark, I can't see anything, but um, I got my light on. Anyway, um, it is raining a little bit. Um, feels good though. Um, it's not too cold or anything, so that's nice.
Okay, my last run. Um, I, I did a calculation on my training plan yesterday, and since October I've run 980 miles. So, 980 miles to get to the starting line in a couple days, and then I just have those final 50. Um, it kind of feels crazy that um, I've run that far since then. Um, I've run mostly by myself, but I've run with uh, Wendy and Brandon a few times and some races too, so um, it's been pretty incredible. Um, got through it without getting seriously hurt. Um, of course, running that far, you're gonna have a few um, little issues along the way, but I didn't have anything major where I had to stop running, so. Um, anyway, still raining. Um, I'm by the uh, closed bathrooms at Heritage Park, but hey, they got lights, so that, that's helpful. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, go in, get some work done. Next time I see you, I will be at Restore. Okay, so I'm at Restore again, and today I'm going to do a stretch. Um, I see on the table is the Hypervolts, which I already, I actually have one myself, but it's much harder to use, and um, I'm not a professional, so um, it's much uh, better if someone else does it. Um, I've been coming to get a stretch probably for four months, maybe. Almost the whole time I've been doing this training, and it's really helped. Um, sometimes I can't really tell how bad my legs are until I come in here. Um, there's been times that like my calves are really hurting. Like I can't hardly have them touched and I don't even realize it until I'm in here. So, and usually I can tell the difference when I come in, I'm really tight. And then afterwards I'm not so tight. So um, I've really enjoyed doing this and I've been usually doing it Thursday. And it's just cause it's close to before um, the weekend where there's a long run. So really long run this weekend. So hopefully um, this will help and I'm sure it'll help next weekend for the recovery um, once I'm done. Hi guys, I'm Elena. I'm Quinn's Mobility Specialist. We're just gonna be going through a couple of assisted stretches that are gonna keep him race ready. Um, like he said before, he's been doing this for a while. So the more you do stretching mobility work, um, the better you perform. So we're just gonna run through some of those really quick. It's Elena again. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, Clint, good luck. You're gonna kill it. Um, he has been coming, I think he said about four months now. So I've gotten to watch the training process and it's been inspiring, not only for me, but everybody that works here, other customers. I don't think I've ever met someone so diligent about their training. So I have no doubt that he's gonna kill it and it has been such a fun experience to watch the whole process. Okay, it's Friday, I'm back at Restore, and now I'm getting my drip. I'm getting the um, pre-game drip. Um, it has a lot of stuff that helps you like keep going, and um, helps with recovery too, so. Um, there's my V-Way up there. It's kind of funny, because you can actually taste it too, which is always interesting, but anyway, I'm gonna do this, get some lunch, and then go down to Ottawa for packet pickup. Um, so I'm just done with my drip and um, the employees at Restore were so nice. They um, got me a little gift bag and that's really cool. Um, I really think as you are running, the smallest little things can really um, just mean a lot because again, you do all this by yourself and it just gets um, kind of difficult. So that was really cool, um, unexpected, and I can't wait to see what's in the bag. Okay, I'm gonna open my um, thing that I got from our store. First off, really cool bag. Um, it's really neat. And then I got a card in there too, and look what that says. The man, the myth, the legend. 
Um, I don't know about that, but that's really nice. It says, thank you. And that there's just nice messages for everyone. Which is really cool. Um, they're probably sick of hearing about this race all the time. Um, I only talked really to it. Um, about it with them, uh, my wife and my kids. So um, I didn't really ever really mention on this channel that I was doing this, uh, mostly because I was always worried I was going to get hurt or something like that. But um, it's really nice. So let's see what else is in here. I got a cool Restore water bottle, which I can definitely use that. Oh, yeah. A shirt. And what is this? A blanket. And finally, really nice restore blanket, which I will probably be lying under whenever I get home tomorrow. So again, um, everyone at Restore, thank you. Um, this means a lot and is really, really nice. So during all this training, we also got a new puppy. Her name is Ellie. And I want her to run with me someday. So I've done a lot of talking in this video. I wanted to talk about mostly the week preceding this 50 mile race, but I also like to talk about um, some of the people that have helped me along the way and just some of the things that I've done. So um, I've been inspired by a lot of different people. Um, my wife um, and Brandon have both um, run with me this whole time. They never really ran, <coughs> excuse me, the full distance, but they um, just meeting them in the morning, you know, even if they ran like four miles and I ran 10, it was still just good to have someone there to talk to and just kind of see um, before I kept going. And there's other times where I started before them and then ran back with them, which was way better because then it would just give me something to look forward to, to see them. So um, Brandon's a really new runner. Um, he, uh, is getting ready to run his half marathon. Um, my wife has run, but she kind of, um, stopped for a little bit, but she's getting run, ready to run that same half marathon. So in April, we're all three running the Clinton half marathon together. Um, so that's going to be fun. Um, I'm inspired by a lot of YouTube videos as well. Um, I watch, um, ones about Leadville, the Moab 240, um, all these races that I will probably um, never actually do myself, but I am just interested in and I um, like seeing the runner stories. Like I, I like seeing someone that um, runs their first hundred mile and didn't think they could do it and then does it. Um, and I just get as emotional as they do when they finish. I don't know um, really what it is about that, but it's just you get that same feeling just um, watching them uh, cross the finish line. Um, two of our local um, running channels I really like um, are Todd Chandler's and um, Jason Silver's. Um, he has the Year I Got the Runs. Um, both of theirs, um, their uh, channels were started way before um, I ever started running. Like I have watched some of Todd's old videos where he uh, ran his first 50K and he looks like a child almost. He looks really young, but um, he has kind of the same nervous energy that I have felt before. Um, it's just inspiring to see um, some of the different races he's done. And he's just an interesting person because he is uh, like, he's working on a car right now. And it's just, it's just funny because it's just something I would never do. And then Jason's channel, he does uh, mostly road races. He's done some trail races, but um, he does mostly road races. And before uh, COVID, he would do, um, we'd almost cover the same race and every race they'd have him um, going by me. But I've watched a lot of their older videos um, that I never even really knew of races that they ran. And it's just inspiring and it's just fun to see um, other people running, uh, other people running the same um, places that you do or give you ideas of places that you could run. So I really appreciate um, their channel. Um, I hope that there's someone out there watching this that gets that same thing that um, if you think that you're watching some professional runner, um, definitely not. Um, I'm, I'm, I've gotten, um, age group rewards before, but those are usually if there is a, a few people running, um, normally I've gotten last more times than I've gotten age group awards. 
and I'm not really slow by any means, but I'm definitely in the middle. So um, I hope that that is what you get out of this channel is just kind of see the different places you can run and give you ideas. I mean, the fact that I'm going to be trying to run this 50 mile race, um, if I can do it, then if you train, you can definitely do it. So if you've thought about it and wondered if you could do it, don't be scared. Um, just sign up for it, get your training plan, and then just execute it. And you you can do it too. So the next thing I want to talk about is, um, again, I did run with people every once in a while, but a lot of the times I was out there by myself in the dark. And, you know, when you run 20, anything over 10 miles, you really have a lot of time just to think. So I would think about work and um you know, what I would do when I get home, things that um, I could do with the family. Just I would just have a lot of time to think, you know, because it's just running. So it's just kind of monotonous at times, especially when you're doing it five times a week. So um, probably in the beginning of my running time, I was out running probably like 10 o'clock at night on a Friday. And I just thought it was crazy. There was no one out there or else, no one else that I even passed, no bicyclists, no one was out there. And I just started thinking about um, how I was the only one that was probably doing this right now. And then really beyond that, then I started thinking, you know, there's probably someone else that's like in their mid forties and married with kids and thinking about running his first ultra mile. So I'd always think about that person and wondering, you know, I wonder what they're running today. I wonder where they are. Are they in the United States? Are they outside of the country? And then I started thinking about, you know, well, it would be so cool if I could just kind of have that person run with me. And obviously it wasn't true, but it always just kind of made the runs a little bit more enjoyable. And then there was times where I felt really good and I just imagined that this person didn't feel good. So I kind of thought, you know, Hey, come with me. I'll, I'll, I'll pick you up and we can, we can finish this run. And there was other times where I just felt terrible and I didn't want to be there. And I just imagined that this person was like cheering me on and making me feel good. So, um, just because you're the only one out there doesn't mean you're the only one doing this. I mean, this world's big. There's a lot of people have these stupid, crazy dreams. So it's just good to like think about the other people that are um, going through the same thing as you. Um, being an ultra runner is definitely um, kind of a rare thing, um, but not really. It doesn't seem as rare, I guess, when you're in the running community because it seems like a lot of people are running that same distance or running further than you. So. It's hard to get that perspective sometimes. Okay, I'm in Ottawa, going to get my packet. It's a little bit muddy where I parked, but that's all right. Um, brings back a lot of memories from the 50K. So I'm gonna get out here and get my stuff. Hey, it's Addy, and I'm really proud of my dad for uh, training for this 50 mile. He's been working really hard with my mom my, and my, uh, dad's friend's trainer, Brandon. Um, I'm really excited to pace him. I think it'll be really fun and really rewarding at the end, at the finish line. And I'm really excited to see him complete it. So yeah, good job, dad, you got this. I'm really excited for Clint for tomorrow. I think he's gonna do a great job. Um, I think he's been working <laughs> extremely hard. Um, I'm beyond impressed with his ability to just push through and run. Uh, it's definitely um, motivated me as well. He's motivated, I think, our entire family to be more physically fit and athletic, and I'm, I'm just looking forward to finishing the last six and a half miles with him at the finish line. So, good luck for tomorrow, Clint. Love you very much. Okay, headed on the way to Ottawa. Um, I just have to drive across Highway 68, have all my stuff ready and on, so as soon as I get there, I can go to the starting line and get started. So, I'm um, gonna be an exciting day, long day, but um, I really think it's gonna be fun, and it's gonna be uh, great to finally have um, all this training pay off. Okay, I'm here. It's time to go to the race. Thank you for watching. And again, if you um, are interested in doing a 50 mile race, just get your training and you can do it. Talk to you on the next video.